Welcome to your bedtime routine. How are you doing today? Good, feeling sleepy. All right, awesome. I have a set of teas here for you. So I have, this one is peppermint tea. And then I have lemongrass tea. I also have ginger and lemongrass tea. So this is more so if you are feeling um, a little bit under the weather. And the peppermint tea is if you're feeling a little bit of like a belly ache, like you wanna just kind of soothe your belly. And the lemongrass tea is just a nice refreshing tea. And then we also have the calming and restful blends. So the calming blend has skull cap. I don't have the ingredients on here, but skull cap and other sedative teas. And then restful tea has valerian, chamomile, passion flower, and skull cap. So these are similar in the sense that they're both kind of sedative sleep aids. So it all depends on what you're feeling like. Are you under the weather at all? Do you have any symptoms of sore throat or? Yeah, I do have a little bit of sore throat. Okay. Okay, so we might want to use a little bit of ginger. How is your belly feeling? It's too? feeling fine. It's feeling fine. And, okay. In that case, we'll do a little bit of ginger and then we can choose one of these. Would you like the calming or the restful tea? Uh, okay, let's do that then. All right, so I'm just gonna have that steep for a little bit. I have a few more questions for you in the meantime. In terms of your bedtime routine, I'm going to be doing a facial, a little bit of a massage. I'm also gonna read you some Harry Potter because you do, I know you like that. Um, I can also put some lotion on like your upper body area, neck area. And yeah, and then serve you some tea and we'll see what else. Is there anything else you'd like for me to do for you today? No, that sounds great. Okay, awesome. Um, I can also run the diffuser. It has some lavender in it. Would you like that? And then in terms of your sleep right now, do you have any complaints? Um, if I do wake up in the middle of the night, it's hard for me to kind of go back to sleep. So I'd be awake for some time. How long would you be awake? Around an hour. Maybe. An hour, okay. And how often do you wake up? How um, many nights a week? How many nights a week? Mm -hmm. Um, I would say mostly every day, if not, maybe five days a week. Okay. 
And when you wake up, what do you do? Do you grab your phone at all or do you just try to go back to sleep? I try to go back to sleep and then I can't. So I play Candy Crush. Okay. <laughs> all right, that's good to know. Um, what about in terms of falling asleep? Have you ever had issues with that? Um, sometimes, like, sometimes it'll take me a while to like fall asleep. Okay. Because my mind will wander. Mm -hmm. Okay, so sometimes you have trouble falling asleep and your mind wanders. Is it because of your anxiety, do you think? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Okay, so various personal issues, work issues, that kind of thing. All right. And we'll definitely, I'll definitely like talk a little bit about um, sleep hygiene to help with that and also some ways to kind of calm your mind. Um, but this tea will certainly help to kind of sedate and calm down your mind um, and stop you from worrying too much. So I think it should be ready now. Too hot. Okay. All right. okay. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. I'm just gonna go wash my hands and you can go ahead and get under the bed. Okay, bed sheets. So my fingers and my hands are freshly washed. So it's good for all good for the facial now. So you instructed me that I should start with the toner, right? Do you want me to just wipe away your face one more time? Mm, some water? No, no, not a stick. Okay. Just gonna shake it up a little bit. And then just get a little bit. And then we can put on the face mask. This is a energy infusion concentrated essence mask to provide nutrition to the dull skin. Take off the green part. I have to take off this part. Okay, so I 
This part. I use this part. Okay, thank you. All right, all right. Hopefully this fits your face okay. <laughs> Nothing better than getting a little treatment for your face just before you go to bed. So you wake up with... Oh. <laughs> Sorry. There we go. I mean, it's not a perfect fit, but it'll work. There we go. You can uh, wake up with skin that's not puffy and it's all hydrated. Beautiful and glowing. Okay. Just going to press it down a little bit. This nose part. Here we go. Alright. How does that feel? Okay, in the meantime, I'm just going to brush your hair. Smoothing out any tangles. So that when you get up in the morning, it'll already be tangle free. And just go on with your day. It's actually very easy to comb today. So I wanted to take this time to talk a little bit about the benefits of sleep. Now we all know that sleep is very important for overall health, that we can't live without sleeping and about one third of our time in this lifetime is spent sleeping, which is, I, th I find so cool. Now sleep is absolutely critical for creating new memories, memory consolidation, for creating new synapses within the brain. Getting enough quality sleep allows us to boost our immune system in order to fight infections. It increases our resistance to various different pathogens. Just so, so important, especially around this time.
And of course, sleep is imperative to having good energy levels in the day, as well as having a stable mood. So it can certainly help with symptoms of anxiety and depression. So if you can bottle up sleep into a pill, it would be the most desired pill ever. But hey, it's one of the foundations of health, along with diet, exercise, stress management, So I highly recommend having a good sleep bedtime routine in place every night in order to honor this very important time of the day. Okay. Your hair is not free. Now, I have Stress Release and Peppermint Halo. Which one would you prefer today? I have Peppermint Halo. Okay. Sometimes, especially on warmer nights, I like to apply a bit of Peppermint Halo just and my anterior hairline. I can also apply some down here. And it'll just help to cool you down because at night, in order to facilitate sleep, the body actually prefers a bit more of a cooler environment. So dark. Um, quiet and cooler. So the peppermint halo can actually kind of create a cooling sensation which will help to facilitate sleep. And of course it just feels really nice and is super relaxing. your shoulders a little bit, just releasing any tension that may be here. We want to promote the parasympathetic nervous system, the rest and digest system. One of the most effective ways to do this is just to take deep breaths. So let's take a deep breath in together. And out. And that exhale really helps to get you into that parasympathetic state 
Another deep breath in. And out. Very good. Let's take one more deep breath. And out. massaging the temples, allowing your temporalis muscles to just relax. And I want you to focus on relaxing the jaw, just letting it hang a little bit. So just massaging the masseter muscles. Okay. All right. Shall we take this mask off? Some of this excess gel. Okay. All right. Now we're going to be using this ultra repair cream. Just applying it all over. Give it a little bit more. trying to nourish all of your skin. There we go. Okay. I'm going to apply a little bit to your neck as well. like a lymphatic massage. It's from the mask. Just get that off. The 
side there's a little bit too. And last but not least, we're going to apply some of this eye cream. And we're just going to gently dab the cream around the under eye area, outward to the temples, and along the brow. I also want to put a little bit of lotion um, down where your traps or shoulders are. Actually, this is more of a cream. It's made, handmade by my friend Janessa from Gin Glow Enterprises. And she makes these very clean, handmade products with very high quality natural ingredients. I'm just warming it up and it smells really, really nice. I'm just going to use it to kind of massage. encouraging all of these muscles that tend to be tight all day to relax and then pulling head a little bit for some traction. And then just some finger circles back here where he where the neck upper traps the neck are. Last but not least, I'm going to use this rose quartz roller. Actually, it's clear quartz. And I'm just going to roll it all over the face. And it's a little cool, which feels really nice. I'm going to reduce any swelling, any excess edema in the skin. 
just give it a bit of a massage and then also reduce any redness you should have plenty of alpha waves in your brain and alpha waves are more sort of meditative very relaxed waves and they're also part of the first stage of sleep and then we move into the second stage of sleep where theta waves dominate and at this point you can still wake up you're drifting off drifting off and then you can move into third stage of sleep where you start to have more delta waves and this is deep sleep this is very refreshing sleep that we definitely need and stage four is an even deeper sleep with more delta waves And we're going to move through this cycle again and again quite a few times during our sleep from light sleep stage one REM sleep stage two stage three stage four and then back up into stage three and two and one so it's actually completely normal for you to wake up in your sleep as long as you're able to go back to sleep okay because it's very natural for us to go in and out of these cycles when you wake up from a sleep cycle just stay in your bed if you need to use the bathroom, go ahead and use the bathroom. Or if you need to drink, drink some water. And then you can go back to bed, turn off the lights, keep your devices away, and just take deep breaths in and out, in and out, to encourage the alpha waves to come back and dominate. And then you'll be back in stage one before you know it. help you go to sleep, I want to read to you a little bit of Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. I know it's a pretty action-packed book, but I'll read it in a soothing way to help you fall asleep. So I'm just going to pick a random chapter. Chapter 6 Talons and Tea Leaves When Harry, Ron, and Hermione entered the Great Hall for breakfast the next day, 
the first thing they saw was Draco Malfoy, who seemed to be entertaining a large group of Slytherins with a very funny story. As they passed, Malfoy did a ridiculous impression of a swooning fit, and there was a roar of laughter. Ignore him, said Hermione, who was right behind Harry. Just ignore him. It's not worth it. Hey, Potter, shrieked Pansy Parkinson, a Slytherin girl with a face like a pug. Potter, the defenders are coming, Potter. Ooh. Harry dropped into a seat at the Gryffindor table next to George Weasley. New third year course schedules, said George, passing them over. What's up with you, Harry? Malfoy, said Ron, sitting down on George's other side and glaring over at the Slytherin table. George looked up in time to see Malfoy pretending to faint with terror again. That little kid, he said calmly. He wasn't so cocky last night when the Dementors were down at, at our end of the train. Came running to into our compartment, didn't he, Fred? Nearly wet himself, said Fred with a contemptuous glance at Malfoy. I wasn't too happy myself, said George. They're horrible things, those Dementors. Sort of freeze your insides, don't they, said Fred. You didn't pass out, though, did you, said Harry in a low voice. Forget it, Harry, said George bracingly. Dad had to go out to ask a fan one time, remember, Fred? And he, he said it was the worst place he'd ever been. He came back all weak and shaking. They suck the happiness out of a place to mentors. Most of the prisoners go mad in there. Anyway, we'll see how happy Malfoy looks after our first Quidditch match. Gryffindor versus Slytherin. First game of the season, remember? The only time Harry and Malfoy had faced each other in a Quidditch match, Malfoy had definitely come off worse. Feeling slightly more cheerful, Harry helped himself to sausages and fried tomatoes. Hermione was examining her new schedule. Ooh, good. We're starting some new subjects today, she said happily. Hermione, said Ron, frowning as he looked over her shoulder. They've messed up your schedule. Look, they've got you down for about ten subjects a day. There isn't enough time. Oh, I'll manage. I've fixed it all with Professor McGonagall. But look, said Ron, laughing. See this morning? Nine o'clock divination. And underneath, nine o'clock, muggle studies. And Ron leaned closer to the schedule, disbelieving. Look, underneath that, arithmancy, nine o'clock. I mean, I know you're good, Hermione, but no one's that good. How are you supposed to be in three classes at once? Don't be silly, said Hermione shortly. Of course I won't be in three classes at once. Well then, pass the marmalade, said Hermione. But, oh Ron, what's to you if my schedule's a bit full? Hermione stopped. I told you, I fixed it all with Professor McGonagall. Just then, Hagrid entered the Great Hall. He was wearing his long, moleskin overcoat and was absentmindedly swinging a dead pole cat from one in on his hand. All right, he said eagerly, pausing on the way to the staff table. You're in my first ever lesson, right after lunch. Been up since five getting everything ready. Hope it's okay. Me, a teacher, honestly. He grinned broadly at them and headed off to the staff table, still swinging the pole cat. Wonder what he's been getting ready said Ron, a note of anxiety in his voice. The hall was starting to empty as people headed off toward their first lesson. Ron checked his course schedule. We'd better go. Look, divination's at the top of North Tower. It'll take us ten minutes to get there. They finished their breakfast hastily, said goodbye to Fred and George, and walked back through the hall. 
As they passed the Slytherin table, Malfoy did yet another impression of his fainting fit. The shouts of laughter followed Harry into the entrance hall. Their journey through the castle to North Tower was a long one. Two years at Hogwarts hadn't taught them anything about the castle, and they had never been inside North Tower before. There's got to be a shortcut, Ron panted as they climbed their seventh long staircase and emerged on an unfamiliar landing, where there was nothing but a large painting of a bare stretch of grass hanging on the stone wall. I think it's this way, said Hermione, peering down the empty passage to the right. Can't be. That's south. Look, you can see a bit of the lake out of the window. Harry was watching the painting. A fat, dapple gray pony had just ambled onto the grass and was grazing nonchalantly. Harry was used to the subjects of Hogwarts paintings moving around and leaving their frames to visit one another but he always enjoyed watching it. A moment later, a short squat knight in a suit of armor clanked into the picture after his pony. By the look of the grass stains on his metal knees, he had just fallen off. Aha, uh -huh, he yelled, seeing Harry von Hermione. What villains are these that trespass upon my private lands? Come to scorn at my fall, perchance. Draw, you knaves, you dogs. They watched in astonishment as a little knight tugged his sword out of its scabbard and began brandishing it violently, hopping up and down in rage. But the sword was too long for him. A particularly wide, wild swing made him overbalance, and he landed face down in the grass. Are you alright? said Harry, moving closer to the picture. Get back, you scurvy braggart! Back, you rogue! The knight seized the sword again and used it to push himself back up. But the blade dang sank deeply into the grass and, though he pulled with all his might, he couldn't get it out again. Finally, he had to flop back down onto the grass and push up his visor to mop his sweating face. Listen, said Harry taking advantage of the knight's exhaustion. We're looking for the North Tower. You don't know the way, do you? A quest? The knight's rage seemed to vanish instantly. He clanked to his feet and shouted, Come follow me, dear friends, and we shall find our goal, or else shall perish bravely in the church. He gave the sword another fruitless tug, tried and failed to mount the fat pony, gave up and cried, on foot then, good sirs and gentle lady, on, on. And he ran, clanking loudly, into the left side of the frame and out of sight. They hurried after him along the corridor, following the sound of his armor. Every now and then they spotted him running through a picture ahead. Be of stout heart, the worst is yet, yet to come, yelled the knight, and they saw him reappear in front of an alarmed group of women and crinolines, whose picture hung on the wall of a narrow spiral staircase. Puffing loudly, Harry, Ron, and Hermione climbed the tightly spiraling steps, getting dizzier and dizzier, until at last they heard the murmur of voices above them and knew they had reached the classroom. Farewell, cried the knight, popping his head into a painting of some sinister-looking monks. Farewell, my comrades-in-arms, if you ever need a noble heart and steely sinew, call upon Sir Cadigan. Yeah, we'll call you, muttered Ron as the knight disappeared. If we ever need someone mental. They climbed the last few steps and emerged onto a tiny landing where most of the class was already assembled. There were no doors off this landing, but Ron nudged Harry and pointed at the ceiling where there was a circular trap door with a brass plaque on it. Sybil Trelawney, divination teacher. How are we supposed to get up there? As though in answer to his question, the trapdoor suddenly opened 
and a silvery ladder descended right at Harry's feet. Everyone got quiet. After you, said Ron, grinning. So Harry climbed the ladder first. And I'll save the rest for another day. Okay. Just gonna blow out the candle and turn off the light so you can go ahead and sleep.